Hello, differential equation students. We're, we're in Maple today, and we're going to solve this spring equation right here. Notice that for the first time, what we have on the right-hand side is something that's non-zero. So we're thinking of an actual force that we're applying to this spring. But I've given you the mu and the gamma and the k and some initial conditions. What I'm going to do, because there's a lot of stuff going on here, is I've already got the Maple commands printed out, and we're going to go through them. So here's our equation. We're going to focus first on the homogeneous solution. And so we'll pretend the right-hand side is 0. And we'll solve. Go ahead, Maple. Go, go. Yay! All right. So notice that we've got this complex solution. So that means we're going to go down here, and we're going to have an exponential term with an exponent of negative 1 half. And the frequency we're going to be using is 3 halves. So that's exactly what I've got here. C1 times the cosine term plus C2 times the sine term. All right, this is a second order differential equation that's non-homogeneous, but the right-hand side is something that's fairly straightforward. So we're gonna use undetermined coefficients to find a particular solution. So now we've got the homogeneous solution. Let's find the particular solution. Our guess is going to be a multiple of cosine t plus a multiple of sine t. Let's take the derivative of that. Let's take the derivative of that. And now all I'm doing is I'm plugging twice the second derivative, plus 2 times the first derivative, plus 5 times the original function, and that should be 5 sine of t. And all I'm doing here is I'm following the differential equation. All right, well, so let's see. What do I have in terms of cosines? I have 3a in front of cosine and 2b in times in front of cosine, and no cosines over here. So 3a plus 2b better be equal to 0. And in front of sines, I've got a 3b minus a 2a. That better be equal to 5. Let's solve. Yay, solutions. So my particular solution is going to be that a times cosine of t plus that b times sine of t. All right, we've done homogeneous solutions. We've done a particular solution. Let's talk about finding the initial conditions. So our total solution, when I add up the homogeneous solution plus the particular solution, is, whoa, uh-oh. I forgot to hit enter up there. There's our homogeneous solution. Let's plug it in. Yay. Let's go down here. Woo, that's what our solution looks like. All right, well, when we plug in 0, I've got this little command here that says plug in 0 and simplify the result into what we have up here. We get that. And scrolling back up, we want u of 0 to be equal to 1. So I set that equal to 1, and I solve. So there's my C1. I need to take the derivative of my solution. There it is. I'm going to plug in what I know C1 is, and all that stuff, and time 0. And simplify, uh, so I get that. Let's simplify it. I want all that to be equal to 2. So that's my C2. OK, so I'm going to plug those two numbers. There's the C1 value we got. And there's the C2 value we got. And let's plug them into solution. So there's our complete solution and back into our homogeneous solution. So notice what happens here. There's our particular solution. Here is our homogeneous solution. These terms are going to fade away. These create, these are part of the transient solution because they disappear. These terms will not fade away. They're part of the steady state solution. So if I go ahead and plot, actually, let's reduce this down to 12 so you can see things a little bit more clearly. You see three solutions here. The yellow is the actual solution. You see it kind of wavers a little bit. The green is our steady state solution. The red is our transient solution. The yellow is the red plus the green. And so you can see as time passes, our transient solution disappears, and we follow our steady state solution. All right, I hope that made sense. If not, feel free to ask me questions in class, and I will try and explain it.